Anyhow, today I made a few measurements. Uh, I wanted to know um, if the push-pull uh, is worth it. So in general, push-pull has twice the magnetic field of a single-ended planar magnetic, and it will add 6 dB. Now, a few people already mentioned, well, at the low end, it might not. And uh, yeah, that is the case. But uh, yeah, I wanted to try push-pull with a 6 mm X-Max as I had it compared to single-ended 6 mm X-Max or going 3 mm X-Max single-ended. So this is a measurement of the push-pull. Um, it is around 1 meter, is it a meter distance? Yeah, it was at a 1 meter and I don't know what the input voltage was, but the uh, dB scale is calibrated. So first thing you can see is, let's say 55 Hertz is 85 dBs or 86 almost. And then you have the baffle, <laughs> open baffle uh, roll off. So at 700 something, it's already almost 100 dB. Now I'm not interested in anything above 300, give or take or maybe 400. So this efficiency here is, well, is of no use for me. So it's all about this part here. And of course it would be nice if distortion at least is decent up here. Uh, and the output will be, you know, filtered away. So it would be flat, flattish. Anyhow, this is the push pull. If you look at this distortion, you can see here clearly uh, distortion rises insanely. It's mostly because the output is much higher there, like 14 dB is higher, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but I also think it has to do with the coil width. So the magnets are pretty huge and the coil width is sort of the gap in between the magnets plus a little bit. In this case, I put all, all the coil in the most strongest field possible. Downside is that uh, half of the membrane does not have a coil. So it's not actively driven. It goes along with the active parts, but usually that creates crap like this. So this is a returning thing. Anyhow, um, yeah, I measured this one and left the mic etc all the same. Then I measured the single ended version of the same XMAX. So I just removed one of the plates of metal and magnets and played again. And that would be this one. If we put them together, uh, bloop. you can see it looks kind of the same, uh, except it's lower and how much lower and I could measure it here, but that could give a weird result. I'm interested in the the low end, so I'll just grab uh, 60 hertz in this case. It's 82 and 85.8. Well, let's say it is um, 3, 4 dB. Probably uh, 3 dB. And, and it changes, I mean here, it is a little bit more. But anyhow, that's about it. So let's say plus or minus 3 dB lower when doing that, when removing half of the magnetics, magnets and the metal. Now, uh, if I want to look at distortion, uh, it should be uh, nice if they have the same output. So what I did is uh, I measured the same contraption with three or three and a half to be more output, so it matches the push pull. And that one is this one. So these are sort of the same output volume down low. And the only thing that changed is the distortion. So this is push pull, and this is single ended. Push pull, single ended. Now you can see the red line here is second order harmonics. Uh, these go up. 
if you look at the push pull, for instance, here, I don't know, just grab something. Let's, let's do 60 again. 2.28 second order, yeah, second harmonic. And in the single ended with the same X max, oh, it's 3.5. And if you go lower, it becomes even worse. But uh, second order usually is linear movement, and uh, well, push pull is more linear. The third harmonics on the other side, they do change. So this is push pull, this single ended. Hey, that's even lower, that's weird. Let's go uh, 51, it's 5% in push pull, it is probably, ooh, I thought lower, but it's even higher. So yeah, uh, overall third harmonics kind of remains the same. Except for here, there are some nasty peaks. Uh, but the, the complete THD, let's say for instance here, 6.9, and here it is 5.4, it is mostly made up out of second harmonics. 5.95 for the single ended, while it is 3.6 for the push pull. <coughs> Now, second order harmonics are also not something you want, but uh, you, you will not hear them as good as the third. And I'll limit myself right now to second and third, and not so much the fourth, because yeah, there are differences as well. And of course, all the other harmonics, but the higher you go, the less pronounced they are. So usually uh, and should have much lower values by the way this has a quite high value for its harmonic ah, and it's all in this region where it goes berserk hmm. yep so now that's fine uh, then I thought well should I go my typical way of making uh, three millimeter X max and not push pull because push pull it's nice and yeah it is nice but it's quite a lot of work and it's exactly twice as expensive and more work so yeah there is something to say for single ended now to get some output I half the X max if I want to have the same air moved I should make the panel twice as big well if I make a speaker like a full range speaker, it would be twice the size, at least. So we could compare that, kind of. So I measured the uh, three millimeter X max, which is this one, and I'll uh, put them and it fits somewhere in between the single ended with um, six millimeter X max and the three. So the three is louder but it's not as loud as the push pull. Now I did a distortion measurement the same, so I increased the volume, so I matched the push pull to make some sort of a comparison. Um, so here's push pull, then we got single ended, same X max, and now we got three millimeter X max. And yeah, mm, It doesn't change all that much, except for the 3mm X Max has lower second order harmonics. If I check this, for instance, well, let's do 60 Hz again 2.3, while the 6mm had 3.5, and the push pull had 2.28. Hey, 3mm is lower than the push pull. This is usually the case if you want to move a loudspeaker, a loudspeaker like with a huge X max, distortion is crappier than speakers that move not so much. And that's why the three millimeter X max for me is still interesting because they have to be a little bit bigger anyways to create a buffle, because otherwise I'm shorting out a lot of my low end. <coughs> and to 
uh, show you that is I also made a measurement with the same speaker, single ended, but on the ground. So it has finally a floor that it can use as a baffle. It's not insane, but it's like free output. Red is on the ground, green is on my stand. So if you look at the lowest frequency, let's more well, lowest. We can do the 60 again. 84.4 for on the stand or 86.5 when sitting on the ground. So that's a two, two dB and here and there two and a half or three dB difference in output and it didn't cost me anything. So if I would make like stand big, big, bigger speakers that are sitting on the ground, I could gain like three or four dB just by having a bigger panel and they're sitting on the ground and wider as well, maybe. Uh, well, the three millimeter X Max does not even perform that shittier or shittier than the push pull. Push pull, if you made it the same size, will definitely win. <laughs> but it's also way more expensive, and I'm not sure if you actually need it. So yeah, uh, it's stuff people already told and also stuff that I already knew, but it's always nice to see exactly what's happening and then decide where you want to spend your money on. And I would like to make speakers that are sounding nice without them costing a zillion euros or being a bitch to make. So that's why I think, for me, single-ended is still the winner. And if I compare single-ended with three millimeter X-Max to six millimeter X-Max, three millimeter X-Max would be my go-to because it's more efficient. It has lower distortion. It's uh, more, a little bit more linear than the six millimeter because the magnets are so far away from the coil. So that would be still my go-to, I think. And if you want to make like a huge motherfucker just sup or something, like insanely big, then the dual membrane might still work. Because if you can get this insane resonance peak down to like 20 hertz or something, uh, it's not bothering us. And then it might be a very cool subwoofer kind of thing without costing the bank because I'm using half the magnets of push-pull and I'm not using metal, which are both the most expensive parts on such a speaker. But for a regular loudspeaker, like decent size without being huge, Dual foil is not an option. But single ended with a 3mm X Max might be. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it. A pretty boring talking video, but I don't know how you would show measurements otherwise. So, have fun and talk to you later. Bye bye.